look, it has, it's not like we haven't tried real reform, right? And I'm not talking about like going for the legs like Jesus would, obviously. Uh, <laughs> in 1968, uh, police chief Victor Sizankas tried to change the way people looked at the Menlo Park Police Department in California. Uh, he practiced some alternative ways of making the police look less aggressive. And so not only was he hiring folks from like more empathetic practices, he also removed the hardened look of the cops by changing their uniform, right? The Menlo Park police had clashed with these protesters, sometimes violently. And after years and years of this, the department had a pretty rough reputation. Had a reputation for being a very tough police department, a very aggressive police department, and somewhat of a very uh, anti-race kind of a police department. That's Dominic Peloso. He was hired in 1970 by Chief Sizenkis, the guy... Chief Sizankis had hired Dominic right out of the Jesuit seminary, where Dominic had been studying to be a priest. Sizankis liked hiring officers from non-traditional law enforcement backgrounds and with higher levels of education. It was just one of his strategies for reforming the department. He also let his officers grow their hair out and have beards and mustaches. He changed all the pseudo-military titles to more corporate ones. Sergeants became managers, for example, and lieutenants became directors. Now we know where the cop stash comes from, you guys. 1968, Chief Sizankis. <laughs> <laughs> now, Chief Sizankis uh, decided to go with, as you guys can see here, with, uh, with a green blazer with a patch instead of what we see today, which is basically uh, RoboCop on Casual Friday. <laughs> it's pretty much what cops look like now. And this, the whole idea behind this was uh, for to, to put the citizens at ease, right? When you see a cop in a blazer, you put the, the citizens were supposed to be put at ease. But the, there was a little bit of a problem because the citizens didn't recognize these guys as cops. So the officers would start getting really, really upset about this. On the other side were the old school police officers who missed the traditional uniform and all that it represented. They enjoy the ego stuff that goes with it. Um, they also enjoy that sense of authority um, that you show, um, the clearness of who they are. With the blazer, it just wasn't always that clear. You know, I'd stop a person, let's say for a violation, and I'd walk up and say, can I see your license, you know? And they'd look at me and say, well, let's see your license. You know, who are you? <laughs> then you'd point to the little patch and say, well, I'm the police, you know? This is retired Sergeant Van Trask. He worked under Sazankas, and generally he liked the chief's style and approach. But he admits that it caused some complications. Their complaint was basically, hey, we look like nerds. And it's, it's, it's a long known fact that cops have to destroy nerds. Okay, you can't just be looking like fucking nerds. Look, this is called a transition. Right? It's kind of like puberty, you know? You don't, you don't go from adolescent to a fully functioning adult. We have to go through this awkward transition, which includes some random boners, you know, random boob growth, pimples, strange smells, <laughs> an array of vocal <laughs> ranges. And, and just, and so, and so many fucking hormones, you guys. So many <laughs> hormones. And it can be said, that some people get stuck there and never really grow out of this phase, right? You know, the people that kind of like peak in high school and then become police officers because they think it's cool. You know those guys? <laughs> now, Sazanka's his reformation of the cops was so wildly unpopular that 75% of the Menlo Police Department quit. And soon after that, he was transferred to Stanford, Connecticut. Many officers got so frustrated that they quit. The numbers we've heard on this vary. Van said about half the department left. Dominic thinks it was even higher. I would guess that in his first four years as police chief, we had about a 75% turnover. People just left and went to other departments. But I think they just couldn't take his, his overall thinking, his out-of-the-box thinking, his philosophy and stuff. So they all just, just abandoned. And eventually, Sazankas left too to take over as the chief of a police department in Stamford, Connecticut. You know, there's some talk that uh, he was actually uh, kind of encouraged um, to leave. And not long after he left, the department switched back to the traditional uniform style. Sazankas passed away in 1980. 
the Blazers didn't make the cops less violence, but less violent, right? It did. It didn't stop them from brutalizing citizens. It just made them appear as if they don't, you know, because they look like fucking nerds. And it kind of looks like they're going to sell you a timeshare. That's kind of what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> like if a Menlo Park police officer dressed in a blazer did brutalize a protester, people would be so confused whether if it was like a cop or an HR rep that was taking their job too seriously, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so confusing. <laughs> now, former presidential candidate Andrew Yang suggested that we change the name of the Minneapolis Police Department to the Minneapolis Guardians. So now, when a violent cop beats you, they can just claim that they're guarding you, like from yourself. You know, they're helping, they're doing a good job. Because they're also the sounds like a sports team. It does sound it sounds like, a... like they're part, sounds <laughs> like they're part of the XFL, which is probably <laughs> never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's going to be the name of the, the what the what the Redskins are going to change their name to the, Red <laughs> yeah. the Washington Guardians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got to make sure that they're all guarded. Like that's that's oh, not any less racist, guys. It's not less racist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man, I just don't want them to come up with just like the Washington Sky people. Fuck, god damn it, stop it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's not reforming anything. <laughs> yeah. Look, the reality is that reform can't happen from within because they'll get rid of the reformers, just like Chief Zizankas, right? And, but revolutionary ideas are a lot harder to ignore. So we got to keep going with this revolution. It's important. Hey folks, uh, thank you so much for checking out this uh, this video. Thank you very much for tuning into this channel. If you enjoyed the video, uh, if you like what you see here, please give it a thumbs up and share this out with whoever you think would benefit from this. Share it with your friends, your family, your enemies, whoever you think needs to, to, to watch uh, content like this. And uh, I'm also gonna be doing uh, live virtual stand-up comedy shows via Zoom. Uh, called the Citizen Revolution Comedy Shows. There, tickets are available for those right now. Uh, you got to get your tickets, and 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 you got to get them as soon as you possibly can. Uh, for two reasons: one, that's how I'm going to be able to communicate the login information to you guys. That way, we don't have any unwanted visitors showing up in the uh, in the virtual theater, the Zoom virtual theater. Uh, and, uh, and and I'm just one man, and it's very difficult to keep track of uh, a bunch of different people that I need to give tickets out to. So uh, that's how I'm gonna be able to communicate the, the login information as efficiently as possible. The second reason to get them quickly too is because they're limited spots uh, and half the ticket sales are going to help a uh, grassroots organization venue journalists uh, and so on and so forth every every single week it's a brand new show and every single week we have a brand new grassroots organization or venue or journalist or, uh, that uh, we are going to be donating half those ticket sales to so um, if you want to be a part of that uh, please get those tickets as soon as you can and uh, you can you can make a one-time donation you can or you can become a sustaining member uh, by going to my website krishmohan.com as well k r i s h m o h a n dot com uh, you can uh, you can become a sustaining member via patreon uh, over bandcamp or directly on my website that gets you free tickets to some of these live virtual stand-up comedy shows it gets you unreleased stand-up comedy material gets early access to uh, my web series fork full of noodles the extended big long episodes of of that um, you also get if you miss a citizen revolution show don't we got you we we'll, we put those up for our patrons and uh, our sustaining members to check out. So I hope you guys can, uh, if, you, if you have the ability to make a donation, you do. If you have the ability to become a sustaining member, that you do. But the important thing is to make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to this stuff because content like this often doesn't get shown to the maximum number of people. So I depend very much on you guys to get the word out there. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate all the people that do tune in, uh, that have become patrons, that have made donations, that buy these tickets. You guys are fucking awesome. 
uh, it's it sure as hell helping me out, uh, uh, you know, in in this tough time, and uh, and it's helping me continue produce these shows uh, at the at a, at a higher quality than um, than before, and and keep pushing uh, to create to create these these videos to the best of uh, to the best of my ability and add you know the the, the cooler bells and whistles to it. Um, I'm the only person that works on these shows. I'm I'm doing all this stuff. So uh, every every little bit, every every sustaining member and every ticket sale totally, totally fucking helps out. Um, and I appreciate the hell out of it. Thank you so much. And we'll see you at the next video. Bye.